Recently, I directed, color graded, and edited a music video for a Melbourne band. And unfortunately, I can't talk about it at the moment or show you anything because they're not going to release that video clip for a while now. So instead, I thought I'd talk about 16mm film and why I love it so much. Upcoming, I have a short film and feature film, which may or may not be in 16 millimeter. Now the short film was definitely going to be in 16 millimeter, but the feature film we haven't really decided yet because of budget and things like that, of course. So today I thought I'd talk about 16 millimeter, why I love it so much and why I think it's really unique and why you can't really emulate it the way you can with 30, sorry, 35 millimeter film. Let's talk about what you can do in terms of post-production with 16 millimeter film things you have to be careful of when it comes to 16 millimeter because it is very fragile and can break very easily. So in terms of color grading, you don't want to push it too far. Otherwise, you're going to break that image very easily. So if this is your first time on the channel, thanks for coming along. My name is Drew Hare. I'm a freelance filmmaker from Melbourne, Australia. I have edited, graded and directed many music videos before. I've worked on commercial work as a gaffer and a colorist. And I've also done short films and documentaries, mostly as a colorist and sometimes editor. So let's jump in and let's have a look at 16 millimeter film. G'day, welcome back. So as you can probably tell by the intro, I really love 16 millimeter film. The way it handles skin tones to me is perhaps its strongest feature. It just has a nice, soft, naturalistic look that we really don't get when working with modern digital cameras. We get such a sharp image that we can actually see the hairs on someone's face when we're looking at those digital cameras. And to me, I don't really like that. I don't like the fact that everything is so sharp. Now, unlike 35 millimeter, which I believe we can actually emulate pretty closely when it comes to modern color grading techniques, working with modern digital cameras, 16 millimeter film is just something we can't emulate just at the moment. We can't get that soft look that that beautiful 16 millimeter does when we're shooting with it. Also, our limitations when it comes to working with 16 millimeter film, it's low resolution makes it really hard when working with VFX. Now, the workaround for this generally is to shoot those VFX scenes using 35 millimeter cameras. We can see this when viewing the Hurt Locker or when viewing the film Mother. So the shots where everything is growing back to life or in the Hurt Locker with those slow motion explosion scenes, they're actually using 35 millimeter film. Now it's not great when it comes to working in low light, those shadows can become quite muddy and we lose a lot of detail. And that is probably the weakest thing when it comes to working with film in general. Now, when it comes to working in brighter areas, let's say a bright sunny day, 16 millimeter film just is amazing. The way it handles those highlights and the way it looks on someone's skin just is something that we can't quite get to just yet when working with digital film. And I think the big thing to me when working with 16 millimeter film, shooting it or even grading it, is it looks so natural. You look like you're a part of that scene. If you were to step out your door and that scene was playing out in front of you, that's what it would look like when you're viewing it on your movie theater or viewing it on your TV at home or when you're walking outside, that's what it would look like. So it just makes you feel like you're a part of it. Like when I watch a film that 16 millimeter film, movie, sorry, I feel like I'm a part there. Like I'm actually there on the day watching everything in front of me. And I think that's why I really like it when it comes to horror films. It makes you feel a little bit unnervy because it feels so gritty, realistic, kind of dirty. And that's the way you should feel when watching a horror film. You shouldn't feel comfortable. And that's why 16 millimeter film is the perfect shooting method when it comes to working with those horror films. So let's jump into Resolve and I'll show you how we can work with 16 millimeter film. Okay, so in Resolve, there's a few different ways we can handle 16 millimeter film. So let's go through a couple of them. Now I work with a fixed node structure. So this is my node structure here. Now I usually work with DCTLs in terms of saturation and balance. I usually work in a gamma and then a linear space. We don't actually have to do any color space transforms if we want to use a film light. So on our last node here, we can go across to our LUTs. Now all these LUTs are free in Resolve and we can just try out each one, to see which one we think is gonna work best for our film here. And I actually think that 
the Fuji one right here is the one we're going to go with. So let's close this off. So this is our footage before we're applying that LUT. So as you can see, we have a very flat looking image. It looks slightly warm. And then afterwards, when we apply that Fuji LUT, we have a much more pleasing looking image. So we have nice saturation going on and our image looks actually better balanced than it did before because that Fuji LUT is actually a little bit cooler compared to that Kodak LUT, which is generally a warmer looking image. So that is one way we can tackle 16 millimeter film. But let's say that we wanted to work in a different color space. So what we can do is turn this LUT off here. Now we're gonna have two nodes at the start and then one node at the end and then everything in between is where we're gonna work on our image. In our first node here, we're gonna be using ACES Transform. So just come across to your FX over here and put that on your first node. Now ACES version, we wanna leave that as is. For our input, we wanna be ADX 10. So you're gonna go right down the page here and here it is, ADX 10 CSC. Now our image looks completely horrible, but that is fine now. So in our next node here, we're gonna use a color space transform. So come across to your color space transform here, put it on your second node. Now input color space, we're gonna be in ACES. So ACES APO, input gamma, we wanna be in linear. Now our output color space, because we wanna work in a different color space than this film one, we're gonna to go to DaVinci Wide Gamut and Output Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. We're gonna to turn Tone Mapping off. Now, in our last one here, we're gonna go back to Rec 709. So again, our color space here, DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, Rec 709. Now, because this is on the interwebs, not in a cinema, and maybe you're not looking at a color corrected monitor, we're gonna go Gamma 2.2. Tone mapping method, we want to go to luminance, use custom max input, crank that bad boy right up. And then we're going to go to use custom max output and gamut mapping method, saturation compression. So the good thing about this is that if you have LUTs that are built for DaVinci wide gamut, they're going to work a lot better than you would if you just put them on the end of your node. So if we were to turn these nodes off here and then put a LUT on, so I'll just come across and put a LUT on. And if I were to put a LUT on like this, as you can see, it's not really having the desired effect. So it's not really doing anything all that great because it's not working in the proper color space. But if we were to turn these nodes on, as you can see, that LUT is doing a lot more than it was before. But here is a little problem. 16 millimeter film is very fragile. So I would probably say, you want to choose a LUT that's not really doing all that much. Some LUTs do a lot more than others. So this LUT in particular looks like it's adding a lot of contrast to our image and a bit more saturation than maybe we want. So that's something you have to be careful about. So we could just do a quick balance with that image here. So again, we're going to balance in linear because our image is slightly too warm. We can just bring it down a little bit. Let's go to the screen off and on and of course we'd want to do a lot more to this image because all in all her skin looks a little bit too pink to me it does not look natural and we could bring up the overall exposure in our image but you sort of get the point if you want to be working in a different color space you have to do that cst the way i just showed you let's say you didn't want to do that and you just wanted to work in a normal way or well, you could do that just by doing the way you'd normally grade your image so change your exposure down a little bit Get it to a place where you like it. Looking pretty good, maybe a little bit brighter. Then come across to your balance, and I think I've already balanced it. I didn't turn that note off. And then with saturation, I'd recommend, if you're not working with DCTLs, work in HSV. So you turn that, right click, color space, HSV. And then you'd use your gamma and your gain here. So off, on. And that's just another way you can work with 16 millimeter film. If I was grading this project, the way I would probably approach it is maybe I wouldn't do a color space transform at all. And I would simply just have that film LUT on that we did at the start and then work under that because I feel like that's putting our image in a nice place. 
as you can see, like the codec is nice, but it is a little too warm for me. So I'd say probably this one here is a really good starting point for image. So if we wanted to further this grade, and we'd probably want to change our exposure a little bit to be a little bit brighter. Maybe add a little bit more contrast here. And these are all just things that I'm doing really quickly. If I was doing this properly, then obviously I'll be doing a lot better job. And then I'd use some DCTLs and I would try and get some of this grain out. Because we have a lot of grain in this image here, which is fine. Maybe that's a look you're going for. But with a few little adjustments here, and just by adding that film light, we're already sitting in a really good spot. So off, really flat looking image. And then on, and we're sitting in a pretty good spot really quickly. So we just want to go back and clean all this stuff up. So that is the video today about 16 millimeter film. I really like 16 millimeter film. And oh, by the way, this project is from a few years ago. Um, it was a student film that I graded. Turned out to be really nice. This is not the grade I went for. It looked a little bit different than this. Obviously, we did this real quick, so obviously it's not going to be as good. But that is the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to doing more things on 16mm film. I actually just bought a Bolex H16 M5 the other day. So I'm going to shoot some images and hopefully I'm about to get some free footage for you guys. So you can grade 16mm footage. I think that'll be really exciting and something that's really hard to come by unless you pay for it. So hopefully that is something that you want. And let me know. <laughs> that was a bad frame. Let me know. What is your setup when it comes to grading 16 millimeter film? Is this something you would use or do you do something else? I'm actually really interested in people's workflow and how you deal with film in general. So please let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to learn different things when it comes to workflows, when it comes to film. Enough of my ranting. Thank you for watching and have a great day.